Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of the Storm Collectibles unboxing and boxing reviews. This is the Unmasked Sub-Zero, which is the last Sub-Zero we need for the Sub-Zero collection. And we have also finished the Scorpion collection. And in behind here, you can see that there is an epic brawl of all the Sub-Zeros and Scorpions fighting against each other. So here we have the... Let me just go over them all in order for you. This is the Mortal Kombat 1 slash 2 um, Storm Collectible Sub-Zero. This is the Noob Saibot. If you're wondering why Noob Saibot is here, but it's because Noob Saibot is Bihan, who was the original Sub-Zero. Then we have the Mortal Kombat 3 Sub-Zero in the back here, followed by the McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 Sub-Zero right at the very end. And over on this side, we have the Mortal Kombat 1 slash 2 Scorpion from Storm Collectibles. We have the San Diego Comic Con, which is the MK11 classic costume for Scorpion. Then we have the Mortal Kombat 3 Scorpion in the back. We have the Big Bad Toy Stores exclusive Scorpion with the skull face. And then in the back there, we have the Mortal Kombat 11 McFarlane Scorpion in the original classic colours because we're not going after all the different non-canon Player 2, Player 3 colours. We're only going after the originals. So this Sub-Zero will finish off our collection. And that will allow this Sub-Zero to join in with the epic battle and make it a fair 5 on 5 fight, which Sub-Zero is currently being outmatched. So let us get right into the review. This is a special review because it coincides with the release of the brand new Mortal Kombat 2021 movie, which we have all been looking forward to for quite a while. We can only hope that it's half as good as the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Actually, I'm hoping it's three or four times better. I actually quite like the Mortal Kombat 1995 movie, so if it's good... That'll make me very, very happy. So let's just look at the box, as we always do, first of all. So at the back here, this is actually a really huge box. Um, there's no blurb. You just have the different expression faces, the fatality blood effect, the ice part, um, that's him just in his slide pose, and of course the upwards ice, which only Unmasked Sub-Zero had in the Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate and Mortal Kombat Trilogy, versions of the game. And this is brand new, which means that we do get to cut him open and release Unmasked Sub-Zero into the world. So let us do that, get the scissors right in here, and just very gently, without damaging the box, give that a nice little cut. These uh, scissors aren't particularly sharp. You can see it was, we're kind of pulling the tape off there. And now for this part, ah, it came off nice and simply that time. So yes, this, this box is actually almost the same size as Gollum's box. And I think that's just because of the huge accessories that you get with this figure, which is very, very cool. Let's first take a look at the box. You can see it's very nice, Mortal Kombat logo. It does have a fire on the outside, but it's also got this kind of blue look. It's more kind of like blue stone look. I think this is more just kind of modern, you know, the, um, you know, the pinnacle of the Mortal Kombat original logo. So let us look and see exactly what we have. So we won't be looking at the epic battle in the background. We will be scrolling down a little bit. You can see some Xbox games over there in the corner. That is where I keep them. Um, just out of sight. But for this review, there's obviously a much larger review and a big special edition, so let us see exactly what we have. So first of all, there are two cases of the box. There's the top and the bottom layer. So we'll be looking at this a little bit later. And let us look at the main figure, first of all. It has that new plastic smell, and of course, comes with a plastic sheet. Remember, if it doesn't come with a plastic sheet, then you did not get it brand new and you got it second hand. And be sure to complain if that is the case, especially if you were told you were getting one brand new. So here we have the unmasked Sub-Zero figure. Very, very stiff in his look. We shall look at him in just a second. Let's take everything out of the box first before we continue. We have the additional head, which is the aggressive head of Sub-Zero. I'll try and bring that into the camera a little bit closer. 
you want to zoom in, if you'd like to focus camera, focus, this camera, there we go. So as you can see, it's a very nice design. It's obviously based on the Mortal Kombat 3 Sub-Zero. So Sub-Zero is meant to be Chinese, but the, this is based off of the original actor that played Sub-Zero, which is very, very nice. It's uh, very true to the original games. Here is the ice effect, which we will be looking at later. It's very, very cool. He has the different hand grips here for using it, and it's opened both this way and also um, opens at the sides as well to allow a figure to be put in that, which we will be testing later on. And obviously there is a second plastic sheet to stop your figure from actually touching the inside plastic to preserve and make sure that he is absolutely correct. So we have another additional eight pairs of hands, so we get ten pairs of hands, which is quite cool. You have the open palm grip, which is the, the, the kind of freezy ones. Well, this is the, the karate chop hands, they're called. This is open palm. These are kind of pointy hands, and these ones are like flex open hands. So let's take oh, a quick look at this. So let you see exactly what it is that you should be getting. If the camera would focus there we are. As you can see, it's got actually nice, very nice definitions. The fingertips, the fingernails, the um, the blood vessels in the hand and such. They really do go all out with these articulation. The other hand is exactly the same. I don't need to show that. This is your almost a kind of tiger grip hand, but not quite. That's very nice. And the other hand this is exactly the same, just a mirror image. These ones are the open grip hands. I think maybe these ones are going to be used for the freezing ability. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll keep those to the side. And then you have the karate chop hands as they have been dubbed the open palms. So, very nice. And now we can get rid of this top layer. And we'll be looking at the bottom layer of accessories in just a few minutes. So first of all, let's just look at the figure. This is the first thing we want to do, and I think the best way to do that is if we bring the camera down so that we can look at him in all of his glory. And we'll see just exactly what we have to work with here. So this is, the, oh wow, the, the camera is very tilted, that's what I get for uh, for not looking at the camera when I'm moving it. That'll do. So this is very true to the Mortal Kombat 3, that this is all exactly the costume that was used, which is very, very nice. So let's just see. He has the the soft upper torso. He has the double neck joint. Should do. Quite stiff, but there's nothing wrong with stiff. That means that it will stay in place. So let's try the elbows. Yes, they move up perfectly. This is, oh, that, that very nice buttery movement. You, know, you can get a lot of mobility with this figure. So that's very, very cool. I think this is one of the newest, um, in fact, actually, this is the newest Strong Collectibles figure at the moment. Um, I'm waiting on Jin to arrive, who will be just newer than this one. Um, I'm not sure if Jin is out yet from Tekken, but this is currently the newest one. You can see there's a little bit of a squeak there, but the butterfly joint actually moves out here. So that's quite cool. You can see that there's a little bit of flexibility there, so that's very interesting. Uh, once again, double elbow joint allows you to get that nice crunch in there. The hand is on the usual little ball joint, as it always has. You have the stomach movement, which you can't really move because this part here is all connected to the belt. But you do have the ab crunch, which should go back and 
also forward. It lets you get really, really far into that ab crunch. And you only see a little tiny bit of it in the back there. So that is very, very cool to see. Um, so the, the arm's quite stiff, so that's good for sticking them into position. So let's check out the flexibility of the legs. So in terms of split, it goes about that far. It seems that that is about as far as you can get them into a split. You have the double knee joint, which gets a really good curve. That is fantastic. They've done a really good job there. The ball joint on the foot is actually very well hidden on this one. As you can see, the foot has full rotation and a little toe pivot as well, which is nice and stiff to allow for good mobility and posing. This is a really, really nice figure. It also has the thigh swivel, so you can rotate the thigh to a point there. Double knee grip, double knee joint even. Ball swivel, goes back and forward, and then toe pivot once again. So the figure is really cool. This is really, really awesome, actually. A um, lot of squeakiness going on with that shoulder there. Is this the Sub-Zero pose? Someone will need to remind me, because I, I think this is the Scorpion pose. I think I've just um, been doing this. Like, you know what, I'm going to put him into a slide pose. And we rotate the foot here. And maybe do something like this. Rotate the body in. Move this foot out. We'll do something like that. In fact, actually, we can, because this moves up so far, we can really bring this down to like this. There. That looks pretty awesome, actually. And it, it holds, for the most part, the balance is really well done in there. Let me just show this up for the camera, because that's, that's almost a jump kick. That's really cool. Maybe if we put this arm back a little bit, maybe do something like that. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome, actually. That's pretty cool. Okay, so Sub Zero, you sit there. <clears throat> and let us look at the frozen part. So, this is something that's very, very cool. So, eh, well, no pun intended, but. So, it comes apart here, and it also should separate here. You can see there's little parts here that's keeping it in place. I don't want to go damaging them, so I don't want to go. Using too much strength, I don't want to go breaking them. I'm just going to move it off camera for just a second, just in case there's any little clips or anything that I'm missing. Not unless, maybe this doesn't open? I thought it did. I was almost sure of it. But let us use... My well, Xbox just turned itself on there. That's weird. Um, let us use Scorpion here as our test subject. So I think it is meant to open, but let's just try doing something like this. Is that going to work? No, definitely not. No, it's, it's, it's definitely supposed to open. Right, you stay there. Scorpion. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, it does. It, it just peels apart, just like this. Like so. And it should be the same on the other side. So I'll just do this off camera. It might just be a little bit stiff because it's the first time it's ever been done. And, um... There we are. Yep. Once again, it just splits apart. It takes a little bit of strength, but not too much. So don't go forcing it. You never want to force these things. And the figure, you know, it fits your strong collectible figures. It's designed for that. So you just put your hands in, like so. And then the feet part just comes over here, like so. And that should just clip in together, like so. And then you just do the same with the upper half. So we'll do the, the back torso. 
I think. Uh, okay, you, you, you have to put it over the little hook parts there. And just line them up, make sure that the shoulders are going to be in. That nothing is going to get caught. To rotate the little body a little bit. And then the other half should just clip in the front here, like so. I think. And there you have this really, really awesome, cool effect where it really does look like the character has been frozen solid, which is the first time we've ever had that with any of these Storm Collectible figures, something that actually interacts so much with another figure. So yeah, I think that is really, really awesome. So uh, Scorpion is just going to chill over there for a little bit. <laughs> I should be in comedy. No, I shouldn't. That was terrible. Right, let us look at the other additional accessories that he comes with. Um, so because I've moved the camera, I can't go... Hang on. Oh, right, okay. Right, so this is the way that it came. And I saw only two bones here, and there's a, a obvious part where there's a bone missing. I was like, am I, am I missing a bone? And I was looking at this part here, and I was like, no, that's connected. That's the, the, here it is. Okay, it's, it's managed to move from here into here. So, uh, we also have these two parts here, which you'll get to see them later. And we also have these parts here. So we're going to be explaining all of these and what it's all about. And it is going to be rather very cool. So... If you give me just a second, I really love like the detail, the amount of things that have been given with the Sub Zero figure is absolutely outstanding. It uh, really is. It went above and beyond the normality. So here is our blood splatter. It is just plain on the other side, but on this side it's textured. There's two foot areas here. And what this is going to be used for is, so this actually, this little bit of blood here actually sticks up. I think that's maybe deliberate. Interesting. But what this is for is to show this fatality where he freezes the person, breaks them in half over his head, and then goes into this where all the body parts all trickle down and go da 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 da. And that's what this is going to give us but it also allows for a lot of other really, really cool fatalities that you can do with your own characters, um, especially if you've got like a, decapitable, a decapi decapitated head, decapitatable head. Hmm, that's a strange word, but yes. Um, then you can make it look custom. So this one here, the hip bone with the spine and the leg, uh, no movement whatsoever, this is just one solid piece of, piece of plastic. It is hard plastic, so just be very careful with that. That would sit like that. Uh, this part here uh, looks like a slightly bigger bone, maybe the femur, I guess, which is the, uh, that is the upper part of your leg, uh, largest bone in the body. This one here, a uh, little bit smaller. I would imagine that this is the... Maybe the tibula, maybe the fibula. Um, could even just be the upper arm bone that I've forgotten the name of. And this one seems a little bit smaller, again. Uh, but this one's got a little bit of a ridge here to the front of it, so I'm thinking this might be the shin, but it's missing the bone behind it. Um, although maybe not, because presumably the shin bone would also be attached to the foot. So there you have a lovely foot, and you have two of those feet, as seen here. Ah, right, well, since we have both the feet, and we also have both of the hands with the arm bones inside still, then we can only presume that these parts here are the this part here between the shoulder and the elbow 
And now I've forgotten what its name is. That's absolutely terrible. Hmm. And uh, it's very strange. So these blood parts, we're going to show you those later on, but that will come after we take uh, Scorpion out of the frozen ice. So we'll just set these aside for just now, so we can show that off later. And here are the very, very cool, he said doing the pun, freezing areas. So this is obviously meant for the upwards freeze that Sub-Zero does you know, I think it's down back high punch, or is it down forward? No, it's down back high punch, I'm pretty sure. Um, so Mortal Kombat 3 is Sub-Zero, he's got four moves, I believe. Um, he has the slide, he has the ice clone, which he jumps backwards and creates an ice clone of himself, lets a person walk into it and then they get frozen. He's got the forward freeze, which all Sub-Zeros do, and he also has the upwards freeze, which it comes up and then it showers down on the opponent. So that is uh, what those are for. So let us see exactly what hands go with this. So judging by this part here, I'm guessing this is probably the open grip hand. So let's see here. I'm not sure if this is the right one. Yeah, I think that looks right. Yep, so that should just Clip in like so, I think. I think I've got this this one right. The uh, hmm, a little bit of trouble with the small finger, which appears to just not want to go into its correct position. Bear with me just a second. Hmm. So this is the situation I've got here, that these two fingers here, you can see that there's meant to be two different areas for them to go into and they are just a little bit in refusal. So presumably this thumb goes into there, like that, like so, and then the other fingers should just come up and click in but uh, they don't really want to because these two fingers keep pressing together. Not unless this is the wrong hand. Let's try it with this one. No, that absolutely doesn't work. Or does it? No, it doesn't. No, no, okay. Hmm. So let's try this one then. Different hand. See if I was using the wrong hand. Might have been. Hmm. Let's check the back of the box because that is always a good uh, thing for advice. That doesn't really help. Hmm. Although I would say that if this is the wrong hand, then it seems to work really well because the fingers really do curve around the ice perfectly. So I'm beginning to think that this is actually the correct hand. Hmm. So let us uh, put that one down and we'll try out the other one. We'll use the other hand, which is the same. Uh, if this is wrong, then please do let me know in the comment below, because that is the only way that I will learn. It's by you guys letting me know that I am not getting this quite right. So we're having a little bit of trouble, same as we did last time. Just getting the fingers to all just click into place. But no, this one seems to be working too. So the good thing about these hands is they're all soft plastic, um, almost a kind of soft rubber. 
So it's very good for putting things exactly into the parts they're supposed to. And as you can see, there. I think that looks pretty good, actually, if I'm honest. Right. So let us try this out. Um, so just out of curiosity, which hands is it that go here? Is that going to be these grip hands? That looks more correct, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. So that's interesting. Ah, yes, right, okay. It does, like, there is a point where the fingers just do completely press in. So yes, right, so the tiger grip hands are meant for this part over here. So uh, we'll just put these hands in here for later. Let me do some poses and just a little bit of time. Okay, and these other hands, we will just move those to the side for just now. Um, right, the vitality parts, let's move these out of the way, now that everyone has seen them. We'll maybe bring them back just a little bit later. And if we don't bring them back, that's also fine. You've all seen them. I don't know what you're, you're looking at here. Sometimes I'll go off on tangents, and sometimes I don't actually get back to the original thing that I was going for, and that's okay as well. That is completely fine. So let us stand Sub-Zero into his standing pose, and we will do the upwards freeze. So he's going to have to arch his back upwards, he's going to have to lean forward just a little bit. He's going to raise his hands up to the sky, like so. See, this, this shoulder doesn't actually squeak anywhere near as much. And then we're going to remove the fist hands, which you just give a little pull. You can sometimes be a little stubborn at first. And then this hand is going to squeeze right on to the very one that we just took off there. Give me just a second, just put this on off screen. Because I don't want the hand falling out of the ice. And there we go, there's the first one done. And once again, same with the other side. Just pops off. And then this one just pushes in. I'll try and do this one on camera. Just to let you see. Just use a little bit of strength to grip it in. And then rotate the hands accordingly. Like so. And if we do something like this, rotate the head back. So remember we do have the double head joint so that we can do cool things like that. Then if we do the pose like that, and then if I just take the camera off of its look, and you can see there that that looks pretty cool. So that is for the upwards freeze. And it doesn't have to just be the upwards freeze. I mean, if you want to, let's try and pose it in such a way that he is doing them forward. So presumably, if he's going to be doing the freeze, then one hand will be one way, the other hand will be the other way. And they tend to curve in just a little bit. This one just like this. So you don't want to go crossing them over, don't want to go crossing the streams, bring the head forward a little bit, get him to lean in, move the hands, move the legs in so that he's fighting off against the pressure of the ice that he's creating, and bring these arms up a little bit to interact with the opponent, and something like that, there. In fact, actually, we could bring these hands a little bit closer together. To do something like that. Well, we can rotate this thigh a little bit, rotate this foot here. Now, it's going to be very difficult to get him to stand like that because 
obviously putting all this weight on the front of the figure. But if I stand there and hold the, the, the foot like so, then there you go, there's a pretty cool forward freezing motion for Sub-Zero. Yes. I think that looks pretty cool. I think that's quite nice. I really like these ice effects. Rain comes with a similar effect, um, which is all hard plastic, but he comes with the hand already embedded in the ice. And this one allows you to use the hands separately or use them for the actual ice effect itself. So that's quite cool that it gives you the, the option. As you can see, I've got this. So if we look at the two different Sub-Zeros, this Sub-Zero here is leaning back, doing the Freeze Blast, and this one I've got leaning forward into the Freeze Blast. So, um, two different ways that you can pose the figure, if you really want to. So the other way to do it is if you want to do the, um, the leaning back variant, is something like this, and have him actually standing a little bit back in more like this kind of pose, and then bring the, no, no, not, not the entire body, just the shoulders down. And rotate this just to line it up and you get a kind of back pose instead rather than the leaning forward variant which I did beforehand. In fact we could probably lean that back just a little bit more, bring the shoulders down and then bring the, the feet down a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways that you can use your Sub-Zero, uh, position them how you want. Because um, after all, these these aren't so much figures for playing with, they're more models that you choose the pose that you want to put your character in. And that is what they are designed for, and they do an excellent job of that. So, we have now removed the hands for Sub-Zero. We're going to remove these ace parts. Put those over here for just now. <clears throat> and let's bring back Mr. Hanzo Hisashi, one of the best friends of Sub-Zero, depending on what part of the timeline and what game you're playing. Uh, that can change from good friend to mortal enemy uh, because of a lot of different things. So we're going to try and put these hands, put these arms into these bits here. I'm going to do that just off camera to try and make sure that these don't fall out and um, the reason I'm doing it off camera is because I sit a little bit away from the camera so that I'm not right up in your face and having a little bit of problem here getting these getting the wrists into these uh, hands there, okay, we've got one in. I'll show you that on camera. There's one in. And now just to get the second one. And we are going to see if Sub-Zero can actually hold up Scorpion without me having to do anything. Which I'll be very impressed if he can. So we'll try and do it. And there we are. The hands are now in place, so we're going to bring the shoulders up. We need to steady the body, like so. This is almost like doing a magic trick at this point. Now we have to get the balance correct. And there we go, yes. With the scorpion figure still in the ice, Sub-Zero can hold him up perfectly. As you can see, you can rotate that around. Oh. Well, I think this table leans forward a little bit, so I think that's why. But yeah, you can see that the grip, the, the sturdiness of Sub-Zero is actually strong enough to hold up the other figure encased in the ice as well. So yes, that is very cool. That is a very, very awesome thing. 
And now we shall finish it off. We're not going to do a size comparison today. Um, for anyone who wants to see the size comparison, we'll just do them close to some of the other figures. I'll just do that very quickly just now before we finish off with the rest of the fatality with Sub-Zero. So in terms of size comparison, here we go. Sub-Zero is just a little bit taller than the San Diego Comic-Con Scorpion. And I think he's probably the same height as the Mortal Kombat 3 figures. Yep, that looks pretty, pretty good scale. So he's going to be a little bit taller than the original ninjas. But he should be round about the same height as the Mortal Kombat 3 sub and Scorpion. So anyone wanting to see that, that is that part there for you. So the next part, we're just going to take Scorpion out of his frozen cell. Oh, that was unfortunate. I'll just fix that very, very quickly. Sub-Zero, you sit there and let me just fix this background piece that I spent quite a little bit of time on. Making this look all nice and lovely for all the viewers back at home. Sit and watch. There we are. Does that look right? That looks fine. Right, so um, back to what I was doing. Let us remove Scorpion from his frozen cell. That was obviously Sub Zero um, disagreeing. He was saying, "No, no, do not let Sub Zero, do not let Scorpion out of his frozen cell." I worked hard to put him in there. So we'll just lift these parts off, pull these little bits apart like so. Just take a little bit of strength. Let me just do this off camera. I was trying to do it on camera for you guys, but... Oh, well, instead, this part has actually just came off without me having to do the... actually unclip the entire thing. Let me just do the bottom part. And there we are. Scorpion is once again freed. And this just clips back together, like so. Or at least it should. And it's not, for some reason. Hang on, let me take a look at this just quickly off camera. Yep, you just have to line it up and it just clicks into place. Same with this one here. And thank you, Scorpion, for being a lovely assistant. You can go back to your battle now with your fellow Hanzo Asashis from all the other different timelines slash computer games slash whatever your headcanon is for what's going on in the background over there. So thank you Scorpion. You can once again sit right there. And now, so the last part of this is these blood splatter effects which these will go into the upper and lower bodies. I don't know if there's a, if there's one of these is supposed to go on the top and one's supposed to go in the bottom. I'll just rotate the camera down a little so that you can see everything that I'm doing. So let's just try. That doesn't look right. That uh, also doesn't look right. Let's try this one. Looks a little bit closer. Ah, right, I think I have to open this up just a tiny bit and then this should be able to fit inside of here. Yes. There we go. So that fits in there perfectly. And you can see that there's little lines in here that show you exactly where this part just ridges up together and it all fits in very, very neatly, very, very tightly. So the last part, down here. Um, once again, I have to open this up, just off camera, just a second. And I think it's that way. 
Yes, okay. So this goes in, the little lines match up there, and then this just should press together, like so. A little clipping noise. Taking a little bit of space there, but no matter. And there you have the frozen parts. And once again, we are just going to, well, first of all, we're going to set up the fatality. So we are going to bring all of this back. We're going to clear the rest of this for just now. In fact, actually, also, I'll just very quickly show you the alternate head. So in order to swap out the head, since we're going to be doing the fatality, you just pull on the head. It's a little bit stiff. Just use a little bit of strength. It comes off. It's on this peg here. In the next head, you just press it right back down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work. And there we go. Hmm, the head looks a little bit off to the side. There. Okay, I think that is fine. And we'll keep this head over to the side and let us move sub zero for just a second. So we'll bring in bring it in the blood splatter effect. We bring in all of the different pieces and spread them around. Um legs on this side. We'll put it at the front of the camera so that you can actually see it. Arms here. Hip bone. Shoulder points. And the other femur. I can set like that. So you've got this a range of these blood techniques. And then you get sub zero into his standing position. Make sure that he is quite firm in his stand. We rotate the back upwards and the head so that you can look upwards to see the drastic thing that he's going to do. Just separate the arms outwards and we hope that this will work very nicely. So this part here should connect into the back, just like so. This should just click right in there. And the next one is going to do the same with the legs on the other side. And we'll put that, lean that on the ground for just a second. Nope, nope, the hand's coming out. Hang on. I'm just going to do this off camera just a second because it is just a little bit pernickety. This is the kind of thing that you can do just as easily in your own house when you have your figure for these very, very, very cool fatality-like poses. Just trying to get the fingers to jam in perfectly so that he will be able to hold them without worry of them falling out. And any time I go to move one, the other one comes out. So just trying to fix that up. It's more of the wrist joint that's, uh, that's giving problems rather than the actual hand or any of the body parts. And I th think we might have it there. And then position the feet up into the area that it's supposed to be in. Actually bring the body forward a little bit. Um, the chest is just clipped in a little bit there, but uh, that is quite easy to fix. And there you go. There is the full fatality of Sub-Zero which is very, very nice to see, actually. I am quite, quite pleased with that.
So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. I also hope you all enjoy the new Mortal Kombat movie, which does feature Sub-Zero quite heavily in it. So I'm very, very looking forward to that. Uh, do remember, if you enjoyed our videos, um, there's an entire playlist of them, of opening Storm Collectible figures, where you can see all of these figures all opened on screen and reviewed, which you can find in the playlists section. It's under Storm Collectibles. And also, if you do enjoy, please give us a like, share and subscribe. Um, also, you can check out um, our Discord channel, which will be in the description below. And yes, that is going to be it. That, that finally completes the Sub-Zero and Scorpion collection, which is uh, really, really nice. Um, I'm very, very pleased with that because Sub-Zero and Scorpion are two of my favourite characters of any franchise in any game. Uh, far less Mortal Kombat, but of course Mortal Kombat included. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much if you stayed until the very end and watched all of this. So, um, and to anyone that did watch the entire thing, the password is Frozen Chicken. Frozen Chicken is the password. Please don't say that in the comments below and um, please don't reference it because that will be something that will come out a little bit later. That's only for people that stayed to the very end. Frozen Chicken is the password. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed and we will see you all in the next video. Goodbye everybody.